Quiz 3 for Math 111. Um, for the first problem, really two problems, you're asked to solve equations. Um, so you're given a radical equation here that you want to solve. The trick for solving radical equations is to note that it would be easy to solve if there wasn't a square root sign in here, if you didn't have the radical. So the strategy that might come to mind is get rid of that radical. That's exactly what you're going to do. You might think you get rid of a square root by just squaring both sides, and that's the right idea, but if you just square both sides right now, since you have two terms on the left-hand side, you'd have to foil that out and you'd get a big mess. You'd end up with the square root anyways. So what you instead want to do is first isolate the radical. What I mean is start out by adding, or I guess subtracting, x from both sides of the equation. Minus x plus 6. Now I'll square both sides of the equation. Because when we square the left-hand side, the square root and the square just cancel each other out. At least that's one way of looking at it. Um, and when we square the right-hand side of the equation, be a little careful here, you'll have to FOIL this. You can't just say this is x squared plus 36 or something. So I'll do that. 10x minus 4 equals x squared. Then I'd get minus 6x, and then I'd get another minus 6x, so I got minus 12x plus 36. And so now to solve this equation, you'll note that you have a quadratic equation which if I don't tell you it won't factor, it'll factor. So we can solve this by factoring. Um, the easiest way to factor is when you have a leading coefficient of one, which I currently have on the x squared. So I want to leave these on the right rather than move them over to the left and end up with a leading coefficient of negative one. So I'm going to subtract 10x and add four to both sides of the equation. and get that zero is equal to x squared. Negative 12x minus 10x is negative 22x. Wow. Um, and then 36 plus 4 is 40. So I get this equation here. If it factors, which again it does, because I didn't tell you it doesn't, um, it'll factor into this form. And so I just got to find out what number to write here and what number to write here. And the nice thing I know about those numbers is that when you multiply them together, you will get 40. And when you add them, you'll get negative 22. Think about that for a little while. I think what you'll see is negative 2 and negative 20 do the trick. Uh, so now I got a product of things equaling 0. So either x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 20 equals 0. What I'm saying is either x equals 2 or x equals 20. Done? No. Because anytime you're solving radical equations, you always want to check your answers. Not to see if you made a mistake in here but to see if some information was lost along the way. Essentially, it's in this step right here. When we square both sides of the equation, um, this is not quite the same as this. The way to think about it is, suppose this number is negative 5 and this number is positive 5. These are not equal, but when you square them, all of a sudden they're both 25 and you get something that's equal. So you've got to be a little bit careful that there. You can account for it in different ways. Easiest way, I think, is just to check your answer at the end. So let's check x equals 2. Well, the square root of 10 times 2 is 20, minus 4 is 16. So the question is, does the square root of 16 plus 2, which is our value of x, equal 6? Maybe question mark. Well, the square root of 16 is just 4, and sure enough, 4 plus 2 does equal 6. Awesome. Looks like I got an answer. What about x equals 20? Well, if x equals 20, then 10 times 20 is 200, and 200 minus 4 is 196. Uh, and the question is, does 196 square root plus 20 equal 6? Uh, that's a really hard question, because I don't know what the square root of 196 is, not off the top of my head. Maybe you do. Um, it's 16, but you don't need to know that. You don't need that to know that to figure out if this is true. Because this right here is a positive number. Positive number plus 20 is sure not equal to 6. Maybe I'll even write this is positive. So what that's saying is this right here isn't a solution. Not a solution. So my only answer is x equals 2. All right, next one. Okay, for this second one, I'm actually going to change the problem that you guys do. I don't want you to do the one that's written here. I want the numbers to work out a little bit better, to stay a little smaller, so you can do this one instead. 
Um, still, I think I made the numbers large enough to discourage you from using the quadratic equation. You can do it if you want, um, but I wanted to reward those who also learned how to complete the square. So that's what I'm going for here. So when we're completing the square, uh, what you want to do is first get all your constant terms over on the other side of the equation. What I mean by that is let's subtract 14 from both sides to get here. Um, and then the next step is our completing the square method only works when the leading coefficient is a 1. So right now it's a 2, but I could make it a 1 if I divided everything on both sides of the equation by 2. That would give me a squared plus 8x is equal to negative 14. And then over here on the right, left, left side of the equation, uh, I almost have a perfect square. I don't. x squared plus 8x is not a perfect square. However, there's some number that I could add to both sides of the equation that would make that a perfect square. Um, you might be able to see that that number is 16. If you can't see that that number is 16, this number will always be half of this number squared. So half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. You gotta add to this side, you gotta add to this side too. What I now have on the left is a perfect square. Again, you might be able to see it's a perfect square, but if you can't, that's okay. Because it will always be x plus half of this number inside the parentheses here. So x plus 4 in this case, being squared. Try it. Expand out x plus 4, foil it, you'll get this. On the right hand side, I got a 2. What I now have is an equation that I can solve. I want to get the x all by itself. Start by taking the square root of both sides. x plus 4 equals, make sure you know that when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you got to put in a plus or minus. And the square root of 2, I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 2 there will be a square root in our final answer. Um, the reason this doesn't factor is because of the square root right here. If I made this problem work out so this was a 4 instead of a 2, and you could take the square root of 4, essentially what that does is it makes the original problem able to factor. So since I didn't want you to factor this one, I made it end up with the square root in there. Um, so finally, subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. You get your answers. Negative 4 plus the square root of 2 is one answer and negative 4 minus the square root of 2 is the other answer. And I know my printer cuts off a little bit, so I'm going to write it up here just so it's a little bit more legible for people that look at the printed copy. There's your solutions. Um, okay, I guess that's that. Let's move on. Number two, express the solution to the following inequality in interval notation. So there's a few different ways you can solve inequalities. I think the easiest way is to change it to an equality. Solve an easier problem. So if you're trying to solve this equation, um, you would hope it would factor. Since I didn't tell you it doesn't factor, it will factor. Factoring when the leading coefficient is one or is not one is a little bit tricky. A um, few different ways you can do it. There's sort of a guess and check method, a big X method that a lot of people use. But I found people, some people don't like that method. It involves too much guessing and checking. Um, so here's a longer method. Consider it optional. You don't have to do it this way. It's a three-step process. Step one is to find two numbers that add to the coefficient on your x term, 5 in this case, and multiply to the product of the coefficient, your leading coefficient and your constant term. So 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. So I want to find two numbers that satisfy this criteria right here. Uh, let's see, to get to 36, I could do 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12. None of those are going to help. Uh, 4 times 9 might be in business there. Let's see, I want it to multiply to a negative number, so one of those two factors will be negative. So if I do positive 9 and negative 4, I think those will add to 5 and multiply to negative 36. Step 2. Step 2, you're going to replace the 5x with 9x minus 4x. Kind of take that answer from step one and plug them in as the new coefficients on your x term. So that gives me 6x squared plus 9x minus 4x uh, minus 6 equals 0. That's not factored. Why is that easier? Turns out that it's easier to factor when something does factor when you have four terms as opposed to two. Sorry, as opposed to three like we have up here. With four terms, you can factor by grouping. So you look at this first group, the 6x squared plus 9x, and you look for their greatest common factor. In this case, it's 3x, 
If you pulled out a 3x from these first two terms, you'd be left with 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 becomes your goal. You're trying to factor out something from these next two terms so that you'll be left with 2x plus 3. Negative 2 is the thing that you would need to factor out to be left with that. And so now you have two terms, and they each have a 2x plus 3 in them. So you can factor out that 2x plus 3, and then all that would be left behind is the 3x and the minus 2. Factored it. Um, I guess there's a step 3 in here. Replace that, and then step 3. Uh, okay, fine. 3, factor by grouping. So that's what I did here. This is all factoring by grouping. I now have a product of two things equals zero, which can only happen if one of those two things itself equals zero. I've got two linear equations I can solve. Subtract three from both sides, you get two x equals negative three. So x equals negative three halves. Or over here, you could add two to both sides and divide by three and you get x equals positive two thirds. These are my answers. However, they're answers to this not to the original question. So what then you do, so what you do next is draw a number line and plot those two solutions, negative three halves and positive two thirds. Let's see, zero's here, positive two thirds, sure, that can be there. There's one out there somewhere. Negative three halves, yeah, somewhere over here. Not drawn to scale, but that's okay. Negative two is out here, negative one somewhere in there, good enough. Okay, those two solutions we found divides our number line up into three different regions. And as we talked about in class, the nice thing is that if any number in this region is a solution to the original question, then all numbers in that region are. So what I want to do is test all three regions. So let's test region one. Pick any number you want in region one. I don't know, negative two. You can choose negative 3 if you want, negative 10 if you want, it doesn't matter. Um, plug it into the original equation. The question is, does 6 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2, is that thing less than or equal to 6? Maybe I'll put a question mark at the end because I don't know if it's true at this point. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, and 6 times 4 is 24, and 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 24 minus 10, is that less than or equal to 6? Nope. What that means is nothing in this region is a solution. What about region two? Pick any number you want from region two. Uh, zero's in there, that's a pretty easy one to use. If we plug in zeros up into our original equation up here, we get zero plus zero is less than or equal to six. Yep, sure is. That means is that zero is in our solution set and therefore every number in region two is in our solution set. Finally, region three. Um, pick any number you want out of region three. Oh, one, it's in region three, sure. Uh, change all the x's in the original equation into ones. One squared is just one, so we'd get six plus five. Question is, is that less than or equal to 11? Sure is not, whoa, 11, where the hell did that come from? Six plus five less than or equal to six, and it is not, maybe question mark. No, because um, six plus five is 11, and 11 is not less than or equal to six. So what that means is region three does not give me solutions either. So all my solutions lie in region two. And if I want to express all the numbers in region two in interval notation, I would say it's everything from negative three halves up to two thirds. However, I want to include those two endpoints. So I would say it's everything from negative three halves up to two thirds. If I were to include those endpoints, I'm going to write my answer in brackets, not in parentheses. So right here is my answer. Um, I guess that's the end of the quiz.